everybody know we're going to go live. Just finished televisits. Hey guys, how's it going? Good to see you. How's everybody doing today? Anybody want to practice some practice exam questions for medical coding? I have some questions up for and about pocket prep. Maybe you want to do some medical coding. Want to get into the career? everybody doing? Oh boy. I can't wait to start class for medical coding even though I know nothing about the healthcare. That's perfectly fine. You don't actually have to have a class in medical coding to become a medical coder and be certified. You can do this as a self-study if you feel like it. Um, that's what I teach from the exam point of view, the medical coding certification exam point of view of how to pass without a course so that you can get into the career the fastest, most efficient way possible with the least amount of expense. Um, you have to be certified through AHIMA or AAPC. Those are the two entities that are recognized by current employers. Um, but as long as you get certified through either one of those, you can become a medical coder. You don't need any college degree or classes. You can be self-taught. But even if you do take a course, I hope I can help you out. I like to teach for free four nights a week, two hours each time, just to help you guys out. They, you didn't work a lot in sequencing and it makes you nervous. No worries. Sequencing isn't that bad. You want me to tell you a trick? <laughs> Let me tell you a trick. Let's see, where's my camera? Get that sucker on. So if you're in your ICD-10 book, um, all many, many things start out sequencing or um, start out with some of the most um, of our health problems either start out with weight gain, of course, or hypertension, right? Or diabetes. So a lot of times if we're in the book and we're in the E section, if you let diabetes go for a long time, um, you usually end up with something in the circulatory system which is in the eye system and my camera just stopped for some reason um let me see if i can't light it up again uh video 
camera. It's still not going to show up for some reason. Anyway, um, the I section comes after the E section. And if you start out with something in, as far as hypertension goes, you start out with the low codes like I-10 is the very first ICD-10 code for hypertension, right? So if your hypertension goes from the time you're 20s to your 30s, by the time you hit 40 and you've not really taken good care of your blood pressure, you're going to end up with a higher level of cardiovascular problems. You'll end up in the I-25s. Well, those come after the ITs. Um, same thing for like burns and any kind of injuries. You know you're going to end up with an S code that tells about the injury. And then you need to code the place, the location, and the function that you were doing when you got injured. And those all come in to the T's and the V's, and that still is in sequence with the book. So you start out with S, then you move to the T codes, then you move to the V codes. It's just all kind of in order by the disease and the progressions. So a lot of the sequencing is just in alphabetical order, really. Um, if it's an I-10 versus, um, you know, an S-22, well, what got them out the door today? Was it the I-10, their hypertension, or was it an S-22, an injury to a knee or something? What got them out the door? And it's probably the knee injury, right? It depends on what their chief complaint was, you know? So... Same thing for pregnancy. What if you have a pregnant patient who has HIV positive, but she fell and broke her ankle today? What do you code as the very first code for the visit? What got her out the door today? Well, it was that broken ankle, I'm sure, right? So we won't code pregnancy first, but we'll code that ankle first. Um, there, it's not as bad as you think it's going to be. Don't fret over the sequencing. Um, I know it looks intimidating in the courses and the way the teachers teach it, but um, don't fret too much. You'll be okay. I have um, notes that can help out a whole bunch. I go through the um, ICD-10 guidelines. And I like to write page numbers down in my guidelines of examples inside the ICD-10 book of what that particular code or guideline looks like. Let me see if this will work now. No. Let me... Delete that. See if I can't add another one. Oh my gosh, Chloe. Don't start. So, in your ICD 10 guidelines, like one of your very first guidelines where it says see also I've got the page numbers of what it looks like inside your ICD-10 book you can go to the page 333 and then if you have the same ICD-10 book that I have but um, it'll show you exactly what the example looks like in the index and then it'll show you what it looks like I'll have another page number of where you can go look at it also in the back of the book where the number codes are and that really kind of helps plus the more you do practice exam questions like the one that I have up here um, 
you'll get to seeing sequencing like you see on answer A, B, and C they all start out with the 04, then they go to the 05, then they go to the 02, and then the 03. The more you start working and playing around with these codes and seeing the answers, you'll start seeing patterns. You always want to do the bigger the problem first. So with CPTs and learning what the sequencing is, a lot of the CPTs <clears throat> start off with your very chap your very first things in the chapter, right? Are going to be the smallest and least expensive procedures in cardiovascular just by just for chance because just because that's just what I'm here this is where you're doing an um, kind of like an amniocentesis you're just doing a cardiocentesis uh, including image guidance through the heart right you're just peri uh, drawing some fluid around the heart off the heart it's one of the smallest simplest cardiovascular problems right but as you turn the page and you're doing more and more stuff and the codes are getting numerically larger. That first code was 33016. Now I'm in the 33522s. The number is higher. The cost is higher because we're doing a cabbage here. We're doing a, a both um, artery and vein uh, cardiovascular um, graft here with these codes. So these are way more expensive than the beginning of the chapter and it, it goes with that pattern the whole way. So if I did one of these cabbages um, and I did this and I did this very first code in our CPT book of drawing some fluid out of around the heart by chance if I did one of these in the back, you know this code goes first because it was more expensive. It was also more extensive. Doing a cabbage where you're doing vein grafts and things is a lot more uh, involved than just drawing some fluid off the heart. So you know this will be the last thing you, you code. So just think of them as the, the smaller the number usually means that that is last and the bigger of the number goes first. So there are a couple of exceptions. There always is in medical coding, um, like the OB um, and delivery codes. Their smaller number is the global package that does the prenatal, the delivery, and the post-op visits. The whole nine months of the pregnancy is all in the smallest number code, where if you break up the pregnancy where you only do the delivery, let's say, that's going to be a higher number, even though it's not as much stuff. But that's just a small example of sequencing. Don't fret. I'll teach you all you need to know about it for sure. Anybody know what the answer to this question is while I'm helping out with other questions? I'm doing self-paced AAPC CPC course. You're a bit overwhelmed. I bet you are. User 149. Be sure to just do your chapter exams and your chapter uh, reviews. Just the exams, everything that's listed um, in your grades, just do those. The videos get overwhelming because you have to be there and you got to click, 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 and it's talking to you in language that you can't understand because you're not there working in the medical codes and understanding the procedures it's very difficult i don't i don't the the videos are very overwhelming yes indeed so don't stress over those uh, download any um, pdfs that they may have those are helpful and just concentrate on your end of chapter reviews and exams you can do each exam completely autonomously, like pick A as the answer for every question, and hit grade. Don't fret. 
You'll fail it, that's okay. You can bring up that exam because you can save it as a PDF, bring it up, and then when you take the exam the second time, you can use the first exam as a reference because it'll have the answers and your rationales for the first time you took it and you got things wrong. And then you can use that to speed up your process, get through the chapters, and collect all those practice exam questions. And that's what you really need to focus on for your medical coding certification exam is learning why each answer is incorrect in that practice question and why each question is correct in the question. What in the book tells you that that is correct? Is it a parenthetical? Is it a right versus left like a modifier? What is it that is making that one correct? Super helpful um, to really concentrate your learning on those chapter exams and you can get through those really quickly by just taking the exams. Like I said, just click through them and then use the prior exam attempt to help you get the next chapter, the next attempt correct so that you pass. Um, do not do NHA. Please do not. No employer will help, will hire you at all if you do NHA. And NHA requires you to take a course from them that is super expensive and then their certification is not recognized by any employers. Please do not. Do your own Google search. Go look at Indeed and type in that CB, whatever it is the initials are. You won't find any jobs for that. But then you go put in CPC or CCS, the one certification from AHIMA or AAPC and you will find thousands of jobs. No one will hire with an NHA. If you've already purchased the course and you're already going through it, then you are going to have to back that certification up with an AAPC certification. I recommend it because you get two attempts with each exam. Unlike AHIMA where it's one price, one attempt at the exam and it's pass or fail. That's it. So I recommend AAPC because you get two attempts and I can teach you how to pass the exams um, from either certification um, from the exam's point of view. Hello, Gokart. How are you doing? Hey, Krista. How do you get started with this course? What I recommend is go into Google and just purchasing you a CPT book. Start off with a 2024 CPT book. I'm in an old one right now because I'm doing some reference material. I've got the 2022, I got the 2023, and I got the 2024 right here. So I've got them all here. Um, I'm making um, cardiovascular notes for 2024 for my students. And I like having all three years in front of me to see what I wrote one year versus the next and that kind of stuff to see um, if there's anything updated, if anything has changed. But um, start out with a CPT book and step one will be go through the entire book and if a CPT code has a do not underneath it, mark it in red. That's step one. Step two is to go through and find every code that has a hashtag on it every one of them that has a hashtag on it will also have a red number with the same same situation going on. It's going to be the same number. So this one is 33988. So I have to go find that one. So I'm going to go find it. And they'll be in numerical order. It's easier to find the black hashtags. And then you could go find these 33988 eight. where are you at 33988 eight. those aren't it that's 66 six. where's 88 eight?
when you find it, just put the page number down where that hashtag was so that you can find it during your online exam because there's a lot of times where you are directed to these codes, the red ones, and if you don't have the page numbers down, you won't be able to find them because you only have 120 seconds per question to find the answer. So you need to do that. And you need to come by here and watch all my lives and then um, I will teach you from the exam point of view on how to pass the exam. I also have a website, medicalcodingbygen.com. It has pictures underneath the resources tab that say CPT book prep. It's got eight photographs. Just click on each photograph and it's completely free for you and it'll tell you all about the book prep and how you prep your book for your online exam and you just do all those instructions there and then join in and do some practice with me. Y'all got D or C? I got more votes for D. So, I'm not sure if uh, Pocket Prep has the correct answer here or not, but remember how I said up earlier about the sequencing, that things should be coded not lowest to highest, but the highest number to the lowest, unless those are add-on codes. But um, the 2, the 3, and the 5 concern me because... I'm not sure if that's a correct sequencing. It would be all right if it was the 04 and the 05, especially if it's an add-on code, but having all three of those numbers in a row like that concerns me, but I could be wrong. I don't know. I'm just thinking without looking in my book. So let me go 111. Let's go find that code. 1111. What's going on there? We've got... The 02, the 03 would work, but if I had an 05, that's a punch biopsy for each separate additional lesion. O2 and 03 is two shaves biopsies. What did we have? We had two punch biopsies and two shave biopsies. So two and two. If it was this, each, each, what would our answer be? If we had two of the shaves and two of the punches. Don't forget you do have a chart down here on the bottom of this page that will come in handy. It'll tell you about two shave biopsies is this answer, the O2 and the O3. And then if we had two punch biopsies, we would have the four and the five would be times two. So, yeah. Interesting. Might be. Or they might have the wrong answer. We'll see. They put down that it the answer is C. So if that's correct, let me think. We've got two shaves, which are supposed to be the 12 and the 13. The two and the three. They put the three times two. We don't times that one because that is a single lesion. The one, 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 oh, three does times two if we wanted it to. 
And then we got the four and the five for the punch. Okay. And then they put the three as just two separate additional lesions that were just the shave biopsies. They did the punch biopsies first because those were uh, more aggressive. They go deeper down into the skin. So that makes sense. I like C. Yeah, that'll work. Bring that back up. Oh, I can't. It won't work. Okay. We just got to go to the next question. Here's the next one for you guys to look at while I work on answering the questions. What happens if we fail both times? Then you purchase two more attempts. I've had people take it 13 and 14 times before they found me. And um, once they find me and figure out, you know, oh yeah, we got to do it this way. The way you do it is by not reading the questions. And that's a very hard thing for people to do. So if you're reading all this up here about the patient and about the surgeon, you're doing it all wrong. You're supposed to avoid all of this if possible. Start out by just going to the individual answers. If it was A, what would it be? If it was B, what would it be? What's the differences between these answers? And only skim the question from the bottom up for those differences. Like, for example, this one might be intra, extra. This one might be uh, percutaneous. And this one might be an open procedure. You just need to look for those conditions here and pick out your correct answer. If you read the question from beginning to end, you'll never finish the exam for one. Um, plus, you'll run into a bunch of propaganda that is there to make you pick the wrong answer. So we don't read questions here. We go look at the answer. It's already medically coded for you. The correct answer is in front of you. You just need to pick out the correct answer. The reasoning, normally when you have two shave biopsies, um, on this chart right here, it says you need to have the O2 plus the O3, right? This answer did not have the O2. It only gave us the O3. We had two punch biopsies, which would have meant our answer would have needed the O4 and the O5 because that would have given us two punch biopsies. We didn't need the O2 because that was for a single lesion, but we were able to add the 11103 and do it as an each. That's why the times two for the two lesions. We didn't have to count it as the 11102 with the 11103 because we already had uh, another parent code which was our 11104. So as long as we had that we were good we could add additional add-on codes with that 04 even though technically they don't they're not under the same grouped codes. <clears throat> the other option is a HEMA, A-H-I-M-A, -A, and they have a CCS exam. I don't recommend their CCA. I think the CCS is more sought after by employers. And that certification is um, just as popular as the AAPC CPC. And both of those certificates or one of those certificates will get your foot in the door for sure.
your job paid for the course and your membership and your exams. That's awesome, Ada. That is fantastic. That is great. I'm new to this, so I would want to do the medical coding one. Awesome. What is What website are you using for these practice exam questions? Let me show you my little partner. So, um, will it go there? Yeah, it will. Woo, get this keyboard to work in. Come on. So this is my website, medicalcodingbygen.com. Let me see if I can't. There we go. Get it to where you guys can see it. Um, and those practice questions that I'm using are right here in that big pink bubble that are right here to the side. It says pocket prep, 750 practice questions. If you click on this link, and let me drag this down so you can see the URL. There you go, medicalcodingbygen.com. And you don't even have to log on. You just click on that pink bubble and that will take you here to pocket prep, which you just click on medical and you click on AAPC at the top and they have 750 practice exam questions and you can put this on your phone um, it's really cool they will um, they are in the um, AAPC format just like the exam um, if you do the three months access for $39 you get a pass guarantee right here that um, if you don't pass, they'll give you three more months for free, but it's 750 practice questions, which is great um, for that price. And the quizzes are great. They give you rationale, tell you what page number to find the answers on. Um, it's really cool. And we are sponsored by them. Um, I've been promoting them for probably like two years now, but if you do click on our link on my website, we get a couple of dollars for that, and um, I throw those back into the community and purchase exam attempts, books, um, other resources like YouTube memberships for my students. There's a lot of stuff that I help out with everybody. Go Kart can attest. Um, that you know if anybody's in need we, we help out so that's what we use for the couple of dollars that we get for that um, but pocket prep is great um, there's another link right there about them you can study anywhere anytime they have a question of the day you can build your own exam so if you only want to do um, E&M that day you can build your exam to be only E&M questions so I like it I think it's really great they do have some errors from time to time but we all do everything that I make is not 100% correct and even AAPC and AHEMA have errors even the CPT book that we purchase the 2024 has errors in it uh, no one's 100% perfect but that's okay so that's why I'm going through the questions right now to make sure they're correct so that's why I was questioning the times too and stuff like that. On my website also, if you go to the social media tab, we do have all the links there. We've got a really good uh, Discord group that's super helpful. If you click on this join now, you get to join our Discord group. This is when and where I go live and the hours um, under the resources tab. I've got an FAQ page, which is great. This will show you um, how to join our Discord group. There's a ton of people in there um, that can always help out and answer your questions. The third sentence down, it says, where is the best list of free resources is a great place to go because not only do you get the Discord link and all my other free 
information, but even there's free certification classes from Medicare right now that are going on. You can um, take these courses and have unlimited exam attempts completely free and you do get a certificate at the end when you do pass the exam and they're like 20 minute courses not bad at all they have one on ICD-10 right now like I said the fraud and abuse one is the one that my employer always uh, mandates that I have to have but those are things that you can add to your resume pocket prep does have a grant application you can fill out for free uh, AAPC has a scholarship and their application is right there. There's just a ton of information on my website that is super helpful. Um, the CPT book prep page is where I told you to go if you want to start prepping your books for your exam. I have how to do your anatomy book prep, how to do your ICD-10. It's all listed there for you free. There's videos there for free too. Um, I have a blog here that is super helpful, tons of blogs about how to code certain situations, even how to get a job and who's hiring. There's a couple of blogs on that, unlocking the career coding. That one's got the full list of a bunch of employers that are hiring. Um, it's all free. The practice area is free too. I have practice exam questions. You just come here and just click an answer and it'll tell you what the answer is. I wrote the code and added all that to my website. I'm super proud of it. Um, I also have three um, flashcard quizzes here. And these quizzes are meant to help you memorize and work through the E&M section a little bit so that it will help you when you are taking your exam. Super helpful. If you um, finish these flashcards exams, be sure to leave the uh, the group that they're in and come back and join again if you decide you want to repeat them and do them repetitively um, which is wonderful what you're supposed to do um, but uh, don't feel bad about leaving the group because that's what you have to do to get the flashcards to go back to zero and then you can redo them again I have a PDF here that's the cardiovascular if you download it and put it into your PowerPoint presentation It'll help you fill in the blanks of all the little parts of the heart. It is interactive. It's super cool. Um, and you can also just print it as a PDF if you want to, too. It's free. I do have a members uh, membership with more practice exam questions. If you want, that's in our bonus area. It's a $5.99 a month for bonus questions in E&M, integmentarian cardiology. Um, same thing you just click on a click on a question and um, let me see I thought I was logged on I may not be logged on <laughs> but you just click on a question pick an answer and they also have tons of uh, PDFs extra bonus ones that you get to print off just for E&M or integumentary or cardiovascular and they, they come included with the membership plan the shop has my page by page notes per section of the CPT book or the ICD-10 book if you want to just copy my notes um, page by page but hopefully you won't need them I recommend you take the exam the first time if you pass great if you don't then you come back and get uh, sections of my notes that you might need page by page notes in um, I do have a study guide for CPMA certification one for just e and &M and one for integumentary and muscular skeletal. Shared gallery is free for everybody and uh, it is supposed to be free for everybody. I probably edited something wrong today but I'll fix it. Um, it's got all my favorite pictures like what ink pens do I use in my chart? What uh, do you use to carry your books in? How do you keep them from unraveling because of the spiral stuff? So it's super helpful. So be sure and come back here and I'll fix whatever madness I've done to my website. Let me get back to where is our pocket prep? There we go. I want to go there so that you guys can answer this question for today. Did anybody get an answer for this one? Hey, Twinkle, how's it going? Hey, 
Yeah, certify, being certified is a way easier to get a job for sure. You need to prep for your exam. You're so glad. You, oh, I'm so glad you found me too, Gracie. Thanks for all the roses, Pretty Brown. That's awesome. Thanks for tapping the screen and sharing. You're helping other people find me and all my free resources. So super, super, super helpful for everybody else if y'all tap and share. Um, do you have to go to medical coding school before you prep for the HEMA CCS exam? I don't think so. I've not done the CCS certification. I just have the AAPC certification for CPMA and CPC. Um, but it is on my to-do list. I would love to take one of their um, certification. Um, but I don't know if you have to take the course. I hope not. You pass the course but still can't find a job without being certified. That's correct. You can't. No one will hire you because of a course. That's why I don't recommend courses because it's not going to do you any good. And it's super expensive to um, take those courses. They're charging, you know, a thousand to twenty thousand dollars some places. So don't take a course. No, no, no. Do you have a template color? I do have a template color. On my website, um, I have a, a page that you can just purchase. It's six bucks. It's got all my color coordination, whatever. I do um, in my notes. I also, when you buy a section like integumentary or musculoskeletal or cardiovascular, you get a color code guide that goes with it to tell you and show you what color codes I'm using. If you turn your screen landscape, right, does that help? I hope that helps. Oh yeah, you can see this and you can zoom in on it. That's helpful. I'm sitting here looking at my live, logged on to another TikTok account because it's hard to tell what you guys can see and what you can't see. That's the wrong camera. Okay, not too bad. You failed your CPC exam twice? Oh no. I'm so glad you found me too. Yes, D. We're going to practice these exam questions without reading the exam question. So what you're going to do is go straight to the codes individually and we're going to see what our differences are. So for like this exam question, we would go to what, the 81 and the 82, or we'd go to the 33 and 35. Those look like they might be in two different headings. So let's clear our headers before we clear our uh, CPT code descriptors. And what I mean by that is let's go to 43281 first, because that is the very first numerical number. And what I would do is instead of looking at the CPT code 43281, I'm going to go look for a header. And the headers are either black, blue, or red. And our first blue header that we come to says laparoscopic. Now what's our 43333 code? Does it have a different header? So I'm going to go to that code and I see it has a different header, which is under the header of repair. Are we doing a scope or are we doing a repair? Do y'all see those headers that I'm talking about? see. So this is the header laparoscopic for our 281 and our header for our 333 code which is way down here its header is under repair. So learning that these 
have different headers is super helpful. This one is a very popular area, digestion, because it has many, many headers in it. So we'll just look through our question quickly to see if we did a laparoscopic. Then we need to see our differences between our 81 and 82. One is with mesh and one is without. And then the only other, need, other thing we needed to look at was if the patient had mesh, and they do. So I only looked at two words in that question and was able to pick out my answer. That's how you pass this medical coding exam is by not reading the question, only looking at the differences between the answers and picking out your answer. What do you guys think is the answer? C is correct, good job. And we did that by looking up laparoscope and mesh, and that was it. Easy peasy. And pocket prep's pretty cool. They're going to have an update here in April, and they're going to change this to the 2024 book page numbers. So, but it's still pretty cool. All right. We're not reading the question. We're going straight to the answers. They have three answers that start off with the same answer, which is that 36831 code. So let's just run to it. Since it's down three times, let's go see what's going on there. They have modifiers. Would we use a 78, a 51, or a 76 with this code? That's probably more about what the question is about than anything else. But I do like to go see what the code is about. What do you guys think the answer is? 6, 8. It's really good practice, but you only have 120 seconds per question to find all the answers and pick out your differences and pick a correct answer. So you do need to get some muscle memory going about where these codes are at Remembering to look for your headers. Are we doing a fistula, intravascular canonization? Are we extra doing circulation or a shunt? Making sure you're under the correct header. Our 78 modifier means it was an unplanned procedure. 51 is multiple procedures. 76 is a repeat procedure. If it's a complication, I told you which modifier to change the description to for that situation so that we know which one it is because the descriptor is kind of vague, right? What do you guys think the answer is for that one? If I missed your um, question in chat, just to ask it again. How do you get it paid, if you don't mind me asking? I wonder which one she's talking about. Through a state fund. Okay, good. That's good. That's great. Yes, utilize resources. And don't forget, on my website, there is a place to fill out the scholarship application if you need it to for AAPC. You have a hard time going to the answers first. I tend to want to read the question, and your timing is bad. Yeah, Ada, you really got to practice this. 
it seems very difficult, but the more you practice it, the easier it's going to get. And before long, you're going to be able to look at the answers and know what the answer is without looking at the question at all. You're going to surprise yourself. There's many times here where you're looking at these answers and just looking at the answers because you've practiced it so much you're going to know exactly what the answer is. You know you don't use the multiple procedure modifier here in this area so you know that B and C go away. So then the only difference if you were just looking at these codes without looking at anything on this um, example is that modifier 78 which is a complication. So then you only look up here for one word. You find that one word and you know it's the only answer with the 78 modifier. It's a whole lot easier to look at the answers and decide and try to pick out the answer. It just really is. If you go through all this and you read all of this mess about pseudo, intima, distal anastasis, you're worried about all this other crap that's in here, it's stressful. Plus you've got all this in your head and you're trying to do a hundred questions and you're building from question one all the way through question 75, 78, 80, 81, and each of the questions have that many words or more in them and you're carrying each question with you to your next question. So if you only had to look up one word for this question, which was complication, and you knew what the answer was, because only one answer had the 78 modifier for complication, then you can go to question two with only one word filling your head instead of a hundred words filling your head promise this is the way to pass this exam is not to read one word of that question and you know they use psychomediast with their their hired psychologist that helped them write misleading questions to confuse you so they legitimately tell us in their reports that they hire psychologist to help them write misleading questions. Knowing that fact that they have hired somebody to mislead you, why would you read the question at all? That is just torture for yourself. Don't read the questions, I promise. You can read the patient's charts all you want once you get that job and that career <laughs> and you get going. You could stop and read all you want. But for now, while you're passing this exam, don't read the questions. Go to the answers first. Look for similarities. What I'm saying here is looking at the numbers and looking for numbers that are super alike, like B and C are only one number away from each other. Out of all these answers, I would start out with these two because more than likely, the answer is probably one of these two because they're super close together. Sometimes they have two numbers together and then two more different numbers together. That's fine. Just look at the different headers, like I said earlier in our previous question, where one of them was laparoscopic, the other two set up were uh, repairs. We just needed to look in the question for the laparoscopic. That got rid of two answers. This one doesn't look like that kind of situation, but we do have two numbers together. So let's go to that 59820. Go see what those differences are. Yes, Ada, without reading them is awesome. It is a whole lot easier, less stressful. It is tricky to learn and get yourself out of that habit. You've been doing read the question and answer the answers your whole life since kindergarten, right? They've been teaching you how to do it this old way. Um, 
and it's a very bad habit to, to get out of. It's a hard one to get out of. So don't worry. I'll teach you how to get out of it. And knowing that they have material in those questions meant to confuse you and actually actively writing the questions so that they do mislead you should keep you to wanting to learn how to do it without reading the questions. So the only difference between these codes is first trimester and second trimester. So what trimester are we in? Super easy. What do you guys think the answer is now? Let's see what we did wrong or if they've got it wrong. Let's go look at our trapped any trimester completely surgically. If it was the 20 and 21 was treatment completely surgically missed abortion. Why is it? Incomplete abortion. Did we do an incomplete or missed? Ah, forgot to check. If you've got my notes, you'll know that there's two of these complete um, surgical completions of the events, and you have to check and make sure you're not under the 12, which is the incomplete versus you're missed. So those one word differences make a difference. I wonder if they got this one right. Let's see. The other one was incomplete. Yep, yep, yep. So we are incomplete. The other one is missed. If we're here is incorrect because Surgical completion of the things. Yep. Missed or incomplete. Yep. This one's going to be easier because we've got the modifiers. The 59 and the 51. Would we use a 59 here or would we use the 51 modifier? 59 is a distinct, right, uh, procedural service where our 51 is a multiple procedure. That might help us out. We've got 25, 26. We've got two of them with the same answer as the 28. So let's go to the 28 code and see what's going on there. 51728. 51728. 2828. That is a voiding pressure. We did do voiding pressure. That's our one word differences, which is great. 25 is um, how much the bladder can hold. Um, 26 is just to calibrate some equipment. So the voiding pressure is our 28. You just need to know, would you utilize the 59 modifier or the 51 modifier? And don't forget to look back just a little piece where the header says Eurodynamics. Second paragraph, it tells you which modifier to use right there. When multiple procedures are performed in the same investigative session, modifier what should be employed? What does it say? That's great. Relax. Just listening to the commentary, listening to things, it's super helpful. You were a CNA for 14 years. I thought it said 14 days, and I was about to come back and say, I don't blame you. <laughs> but bless your heart, 14 years, that's really hard work. It's the hardest work I've ever seen anybody do besides digging graves. I mean, seriously. Um, that 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 is a hard job. Bless your heart. 
Diagnosis and procedures are always interesting to me. Awesome. You're going to do great. Yep, it does say 51. So let's pick this one. Good job. We got it right. There's our explanation. We can move on to our next one. This one's got a mixture of diagnosis codes and procedure codes. We do have two with the same answer, the 40, this uh, CPT code that is the 40. Then they just have two different ICD-10 codes. Remember, don't read one word from this question. Go to your differences in your ICD-10 book or to your CPT book. Verify you're in the right area, right header, right one word differences. 5-4. We do an assist drain. Is that what we did today? This says excision. We suture the base to prevent any reoccurrence too on this procedure. Thirty is a removal of a lesion. Zero zero is just a biopsy. We know we didn't do just a biopsy. Thirty is an excision of a lesion removal. So we know it's either going to be B or C. Then you just got to look up your differences between your point 0.8 and your point 0.3 diagnosis code. What do you guys think? Y'all got point. Oh, we got conjecture. Miss Sheila and Ada battling it out. D agrees with C. Let's see. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for sharing the live. It is C. Very, very close. Our point eight was non-specific enough. Our point three uh, was the EPA directs and then the point eight was truncated and we weren't truncated were we? Yeah, you just had to match the EPA, this cyst name with the diagnosis. It's not 100% like all the way. Instead of M-A-L, it went M-I-S, but it was closer than the truncated word. So the point eight was truncated. Here we go. We've got two that are the closest, the five, seven, one hundreds. Let's see what's going on with these. Five, seven, one hundred. This is under the bi biopsy excision area. And then the O5 is extensive. It requires sutures. 
are we doing a biopsy? Is that what we did today? We did do a biopsy. A and D are biopsies. They're under excisions. The 56605 is under excision also and biopsy, but these are under two different headers. The 57100 and 105 are under the header of, I hope I can say that, the V word, I won't say it, and then the other one, the 566 is under the vulva and word. Where were we? We were under the V word. So good. We know it's not this one then. Because those have a different body part. That is the correct body part. Our 58100. That's under a completely different body part. It's under the cervix. So we can get rid of that one. It's just a difference between the 00 and the 05. Everybody saying A? A is correct. Good job. Whole lot easier. Go into the answers first. If our answer was A or D, our patient was new, if our answer was B or C, it was an established patient. You should be able to tell those differences really quickly. If you can't, be sure to go to my website and do those um, flashcard exams because that's what this will train you for is being able to look at any M code and know what its header is so that you don't have to open the book to do it. And the first thing we need to do is find out if this patient is new or established. So we'll just skim our question and we see that they're established. That helps us get down to a 50-50 shot. We know it has to be an 11 or a 13. Are we a nurse visit only or are we a low level? So who did the patient see? A physician. So. 211 is just a nurse visit, so we know our answer has to be C. And we only looked at one word of the question, two, actually, established and then physician. And we were able to do that one really quickly. Here's your next one. Ooh, these are tough ones. Did we do both medial or lateral? meniscus repairs. These codes have an or or an and in them and that's the only difference between them. Let's get to those. 298. These codes will be on your medical coding exam. Most certainly. Whether you're taking a CCS or a CPC, they're going to be on there. So you got to know your differences between these for sure. Eighty one is the or, and our eighty is and. It does both sides. So we'll look at our procedure. Sometimes the procedure name is not a hundred percent right. But you definitely, we will find out in the description whether we did both sides or not. This one says we did medial of the knee and then we did a nerve removal on the knee. Um, but what I like to do is go look for in here. We did, that's the nerve that got re removed. You have to be careful because the way into the body was not repaired. This is just the way we went into the body. 
So you don't want to think that you've prepared anything there. You just stuck the camera in. So we inspected. We removed a knee, a nerve, I mean, not the knee. Huh? And what else did we do? We did the lateral compartment was deprived. Good, that's one side. Did we do the other side? The medial compartment was inspected and they put in a basket and they did find a tear. Did they, they shaved down some stuff? The lateral compartment was inspected. Meniscus was probed and found to be intact, so good. One side was intact. Loose debris was removed. So if the meniscus was probed and found to be good and they didn't have to do a repair, but they did go in and get rid of some crappy material and they did debride with a shaver. Does that mean both sides? Are you an or or an and? A simpler way to do it is you know you did the nerve removal. There's a couple of codes for that. The 76 and the 75. 75 is limited. 76 is major. We do have one answer with one of those codes in it because that's our nerve removals, which is an add-on code that you add on extra when you do the nerves. So even if you don't know your differences between your medial and lateral and whether you can code and or or on this, um, you can go look for your second procedure that you did, which was your nerve, which helps out. Twenty-two is billing for debriefment, extra, but this one, the 76, is the only one with the nerve removal in it. None of the other answers have anything about a nerve being removed, and we definitely did that right off the bat. That was the first thing we worked on and did. with all the debriefment, and debriefment was probably included. A is your correct answer. And we were in 81, which is an or. We only did the repair on one side. We did do some debriefment on both sides, but those weren't repairs. They were just cleaning up loose material. Nothing that we would bill for, because we're already there. We've got a difference between two codes, the 65 and the 57. 54065. Four O sixty-five and fifty-seven. They're both under the same header. They're both under destruction. They're both under the wee wee. And our differences, our one word differences, is that the sixty-five is a combo code. It does multiple techniques, and our 57 is just by laser. 
how did we deal with whatever we were doing today? Did we do it only by laser? Then you know your answer is Which one? Would you use the 22 modifier for the increased procedural services? Would you times 2 it and then add the 65 to it? <laughs> Do we have any instructions? We don't have any instructions to say how many is extensive, how much would be too much, right? We just have laser surgery. Sixty-five can be done by laser also. It can be electro, it can be cryo, but usually it's a combo. We have to use two techniques or more together. I don't see that they used a different technique. So it can't be the sixty-five. So if we can't use 65, sorry, I was going to get rid of that one, but I clicked it. Um, let's see, they may not have this one correct. Because in my notes it says that it has to utilize two or more techniques together. I think they just don't understand this one. I'm going to have to write it about this one. Let's see. Extensive, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, where is mine? Pocket prep, help. Help, help, help button. Let's see, I always have trouble with this. Their help button. I talked to, um, Several of the girls, they're, they're um, helping me with the other questions that we found that are incorrect. Only probably about five or six of these um, there are, but this one, let me grab this one and let me let them know about this one real quick if you guys can give me just a second. code 54065 requires two or more techniques to be used. So if the question added elect ER, ERG, ER with the laser, then the question would have the correct answer. I hope this helps. There we go. No worries, and let's give them a copy of the question. This one, right there. Here we go.
get them to correct that one and we'll come back to it in a couple of days and see if they got it correct. All right, this one, R613, seems prevalent in two of the answers. Then the two that are the closest is C and D. 61343 and 45. So we can go to those codes. 613. 613. Mm, the nervous section. Four, three, and four, five. The words in the brackets of the CPT code descriptors will help you with this one. I do do these lives. They're on my website. Let's see. Let me go back over here, yeah. On my website, underneath the social media tab, I do these lives um, Monday and Wednesday nights here on TikTok. Right here, Mondays and Wednesdays are on TikTok. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays are on YouTube. I already have the link up for the YouTube one ready for you guys. Um, where's our channel? Oh no. Let's see. Go this way. Go to my channel. Yes, yes, yes. The link for tomorrow night's live is already up here on my YouTube channel. Everything's under Medical Coding by Jen. And right here, you can hit the notify me button right there. And it'll let you know when I start the live tomorrow night. Um, it should be around the same time, around 6 o'clock, 6.30, Arizona time zone. We don't go forward or backwards, but um, if you haven't joined in on those lives, they're super fun. We do more formal. We're doing more practice exam questions. I already have them prepped and ready to go the night before uh, with rationale. Instead of doing pocket prep, we do um, once it... I've already picked out um, from AAPC or from AHIMA and we do their questions and um, it's super fun. We do a couple of hours. Don't forget to check out the community tab on my YouTube channel. We have practice exam questions. You can click on an answer and it'll give you the rationale. I have tons and tons and tons and tons of practice exam questions there. Don't forget to go to the playlist. There is um, the workshop videos are the best of the best, of the best, those workshops down here on the end. Um, they are three hour long videos, but we go over 75 questions. I do them in the same pace as the exam. So 120 seconds each question. I show you what my mind is going through, what I'm thinking and how I would do the exam if I was taking it. Um, the other ones, the advanced duck classes, are super helpful uh, because that's two hours of exam questions. The other things that are helpful is um, the book prep videos where I'm going code by code, showing you how to do CPT book prep, like each code. Um, and then I have one for ICD-10 too, um, book prep. The process of elimination is an awesome thing to learn. Um, just a lot of cool videos, of course. Um, they're on YouTube for you guys. The repeat TikToks Q&A are fun, too. Um, I do have a membership. If you want to watch the um, repeats of the workshops and listen to the podcast of me reading out the CPT book to it, and then telling you from my point of view what I think the sentences mean. Super helpful. You just hit the join button right there and you can pick whichever membership you want to pay for. They all come with the same exact stuff. So it's just all my uh, all my videos, no matter what you pay. Um, I just give you options because they want me to have three different levels. So it's just totally up to you. But um, 
we do give away these club memberships too during my um, live lessons on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So come on in tomorrow night and hopefully you'll win one of the um, YouTube memberships. I give away five a night at least. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. Don't forget to check out my website. It's tons and tons of free resources including how to prep your CPT book for the course. There's even book prep videos that are free. They're going to go and show you how to prep your book in that digestive system. Super cool. And if you want the pocket prep questions, don't forget to click my link here on the side of my website. I've got two of them there. And um, that way it lets Pocket Prep know that I sent you and um, I talked to them yesterday and they're going to send us a good goodie bag um, in the mail. So I'm going to have some prizes to be able to mail you guys out. Um, so that's really cool. Neat. Yeah, the podcast helps. I need to add some more lessons into that. It's just been really crazy with my mom breaking her hip and everything. So um, it's I really need to do some more podcasts. It's, but it's cool. I think if you're uh, doing laundry, vacuuming, you know, in the car, you can play it. And I'm reading you the guidelines, word, sentence by sentence, and then telling you what the, they mean by those fancy words <laughs> and how I interpret that sentence to mean in, in, a, in a really down-to-earth kind of explanation of what it means. So I think it's helpful. I wish I would have had something like that when I was doing this. Um, yes, my child, don't you be coming up in my room floating like Voldemort. That's creepy. What do you want? <laughs> it's creepy. You gliding in here like you're Voldemort on a wind and broom or something. What? What do you want, my boo? What? What are you whining about? My students are not wanting to hear you whine, my love. What? You're hungry. I bought you new cereal and new milk. Grandma wants to make pizzas. She's got um, some, the the pizza dough is already made mm -hmm. in a, and then we could put the pepperonis and the cheese on top and cook it. She's got the extra pepperonis in her little fridge. Mm -hmm. Oh, the fridge? Yeah, in her little mini fridge with the pizza dough thing. You want to make a pizza? What donuts? Well, those are for in the morning. You get those in the morning to take to school. So Does she have any? Yes, so <gasps> that you can um, take those tomorrow and be the envy of all your friends and enemies. You can give donuts out to your enemies so that they'll be nice to you tomorrow. And if I have good grades, and if I show you, if, like, if, if I have good grades tomorrow, can I like have snacks, like you said? Can you do what? Can I can I get like snacks, but like nothing ready to die, but like chocolate or something? If I have good grades. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm almost done. Let me finish, Jay. I love you. Love you. All right. Sorry, my kids are starting to circle the wagon. And they're like, Mom, we haven't seen you. Did you guys figure out what your answer is for this one? I think it's the 43, isn't it? It says it in the bracket. Might be 43. Are we optical? I don't know. This says dorsal medulla. But it says this <clears throat> in our parenthetical. Or in our bracket, I mean. Yay. My children are in high school. It's like the worst ever. I remember high school was really bad, too. But good gracious. 
They have it so much worse now because everything they do and everything they say is recorded and posted on social media. No matter where they're at or what they're doing, it doesn't matter. They could be going potty. It's just all being recorded. Those children are, uh, are incessant. They're just, oh my gosh, everything's being recorded. So I'm glad all the crap that I did in high school or junior high did not get video recorded. I don't know how they survive nowadays. Every little silly thing they say, <clears throat> everything gets recorded. All right. Uh, we got 72, 50, 40. Three of them are in the 72 area. What's going on in the 572 area? Five seventy two forty is our first one. Anterior fifty is posterior. Which way did we go? Are we anterior or posterior? We got posterior showing up here. So we know we're not forty because that's anterior, right? Distext and take it down to posterior. Okay. So we know we're not anterior. Posterior is 50. What about 60? 60 is both. It's a combo, anterior and posterior. It's a combo code. And then our 84. Para V defect repair, but it's an open abdominal. I think it's just posterior. So you can do 50. 50 is correct. And all you needed to do was look up one little thing in that question. One tiny little thing in that question. <laughs> Super fun. Uh, uh. Yes, Twinkle helps with my answering my emails and questions and things that I just don't have time to get to. I send her all my emails and she replies to them for me. She keeps all the social medias, the Discord, um, Facebook, those things, comments under control, <laughs> helps out when she can. It says 11.30 p.m. What did I do? What did I, what did I do, go card? Is that for tomorrow's live? Do I have the wrong time down? It says 8.30 p.m., doesn't it? I see that much. Got one waiting. Okay, I'll check into this when I get off this live and make sure I put that on the right date and time. Is there anything else I messed up with? Does anyone know? Okay, yeah, we answered that one. How do I join Discord? So you'll go to my website, medicalcodingbygen.com course, and let me get that back up. Go to this website, and here underneath the resources, hit the FAQs, and it's all about Discord. Um, what is Discord? It's all explained there. How do I make an account? You got screenshots how to create an account, all that stuff, shows you all that good stuff. And then you'll just click the link for our Discord. Um, under the what is Discord, 
our link is right there. The last step is right there. And that'll toss you right into our Discord group. Don't switch. And this, oh, you can't see it. Let me see if I can't switch this so you can see it now that I got it open. Discord. This is our Discord group. So I know this looks like it's a lot, but um, this is our main chat room. Is that room I have highlighted right there? And this is just us. I ch chat in here to tell you, let's go live. If you want to know where do I start, that's that room right there. Where do I start? And you just scroll backwards. Scroll backwards to the very beginning of this room. And it's got all of my very favorite where do I start YouTube videos or TikTok videos in here. Nobody was really supposed to talk in this room, but people do. Um, but you'll start to see all my videos pop up here in just a minute as soon as I keep scrolling backwards. There we go. We're getting there. But this room is really cool because I took the time to post every single video that was really cool. Where do I start? What do I do? What do I don't do? That's all in this one room right here. All in one area. Super cool. Discord tips is a great little room because the very first video posted in this room, if you scroll back to the very beginning when it started, is this 101 how do I use Discord and that's what that video is for. If you want to put your birthday in, you can there. CPC practice exam questions are located here. Exam resources are here like what camera do I use? Um, what when does she go live? You know, how do I set up for my exam if I was to take it at home and I don't have a desk? How can I do it? All kinds of stuff. Uh, e and M resources are here. I have some downloads that are available right there, but you can keep scrolling backwards and you'll see all kinds of information. There's a search feature too. You can type in whatever kind of question you have and it'll bring up all the answers to that. CPT code resources are here, more downloads, more PDFs, more things that I've done, more practice exam questions it looks like. ICD-10 resources are in this one. HIPPX resources are in this one. CPT book prep are here. Don't tab your book. Uh, compliance and regulatory questions are here. Uh, CRC practice, CCS practice, uh, COC, CANPC, CPMA. You can sell your books, buy your books from people here if you want to. Um, medical terminology and anatomy help have those rooms. If you need help with job resources or continuing education, I have a room for that. Practicode, study buddies, cases. If you want to do the more extensive long versions of questions, we have a bunch of those in this room. Job assessments, if they give you an exam to take, we have copies of those inside that room. RHIT, um, HEDIS measures or what I do for a living. If you're curious about it, I've got these cool pictures that tell you all about it. ICD-10 is going to be converting to ICD-11. This is just a, a room to keep you up to breast of the changes when that will happen. Um, and then if you have questions that you want me to present on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you post them in this room and I will go over them. Like if there, it's a practice question that you don't know how to do and you don't know why the answer is what it is and the rationale isn't helping you, post it in here and then I'll explain it to you um, during our next live. If you have fur babies, you can post them in here. Pictures of our babies. Um, and off topic, if you have a side hustle, you sell candles. I have a cousin, my baby cousin, he is a police officer in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who's going through brain cancer treatment right now. He's in chemotherapy and radiation. He doesn't have any children yet. Him and his wife are uh, working through this situation right now, and um, I post updates about his story here and um, my children and stuff that's the off topic room so anyway this is three or four years worth of information a ton of stuff uh, i highly recommend hitting the search button when you have a question just type it into that 
search button and find all the other people who've already answered the questions here. Super helpful. But it's all free for you guys. I know lots of communities that charge for Discord, so this is still all free for you guys. We even have a room that is who all has passed. You can see a ton of people that I've helped along the way, thousands of people who have passed um, because they came and watched my videos or helped out in the, that, I, that I've helped out. So I think it's really cool to see all the all the years of people in here <laughs> since 2020 or 2019 that I've helped um, pass. So we've got quite a few, quite a few in there. Super cool. Yes, you can take this medical certification exam at home. If you do the AAPC version, they have a version where you log on to an online proctor remotely on Zoom at home and they watch you for the four hours through a webcam and let you take your exam at home. If your internet goes down, there is no retakesies though, so you will have to buy another exam attempt or hope your second attempt is still there. Um, so if you don't go to a testing center, um, it is an option. And I've taken, I took the CPMA exam and the CPC exam both remotely from home because I've worked from home since 2013. It did not bother me and I took them at home. I've taken them in person too before but um, I've of course love the, in, uh, the uh, remote from home. But it is stressful. I mean they had me climbing the ceilings adding in light bulbs because I couldn't have a cell phone on my desk and I didn't have it and he wanted the lights brighter and so all I could do was go run and get different light bulbs and screw those in because mine are remotely controlled by my cell phone. <laughs> and by the time I booted my phone up and all that, that seemed ridiculous to do. So I had to go climb and I'm really short and my ceilings are vaulted and I didn't want to bring a ladder. So it was an ordeal, but you know, it's stressful. I'm not going to lie, but you can do it remotely from home. And I, I, the last one I took from home was the CPMA in January, and I did it in two hours and six minutes, a hundred questions, because I did not read not one question on that exam, and I just went straight to the answers and picked out the answers and moved on with my day and passed it. So you can absolutely take it from home if you do an AAPC course. Yes, yes, yes. The exam is $500, you get two attempts to take it, and then you do have to have a membership through AAPC2. And, uh, sorry, I was throwing something at a cat to get him to quit scratching. <laughs> but you can most likely get your employer to reimburse you or pay for this if it's something that they want or need, more coders. And of course it is tax deductible on your taxes. Oh yeah, I've got job hunting resources available on my website. Tons of resources available inside our Discord group too that has job assessments and job resources both available. We've got two rooms for that. And also if you do come to my website, if you do go to the blog, I have two blogs right now with links for job resources and where to find jobs. This one is our AAPC job board that posts new jobs uh, daily. Also, if you come down here to the Unlocking the Coding Career, it has a list of employers that are hiring and my tips on how to get a job and all that kind of stuff. Be sure to go to the um, Discord group too because I have a whole lot of really good advice on how to find that medical coding job. Like let's say you go to Optum's website and you want to apply for one of their remote jobs. You see that they use Epic EHR or they use MDX Data Warehouse. Well, what I tell you is to go to the MDX or EPIC website, go to their sales team, 
let their sales team know that you are gathering information for your employer about their EHR system or data warehouse system and do they have any educational material that they would like to pass on to your supervisors. They will give you a ton of PDFs, links to videos, and maybe even a log on and password and let you play around in their system. Um, so that when you do interview for that Optum job and they ask you, have you used Epic EHR system, instead of saying no, you've never seen it, you can say you've been in communication with their sales team, you've been over their educational material, you feel confident that you won't have any issues with it because it's put your name in this box, you know, the patient's name in this box and hit search, you know, it's not that big of a deal. What I'm saying is, is employers will love the fact that you went to that much trouble to learn about their company and what systems they use. And even if you didn't have access to learn how to use it, you went to that extra step to figure out how to get you some educational material on that system. So, you know, I got tons of ideas, tons of ideas that I've said and typed out and written inside my Discord group or in my blog. So you guys can utilize those resources for free. Um, and follow those instructions and good luck. I've just never had to apply for a job in the last, gosh, not since 9-11 have I applied for a job. I moved from Memphis, Tennessee to California and I did one application with a job service company and then they sent me to the a job and I was like, great, I like it, I'll take it. And that company bought me out of my contract that day um, so I never really applied for anything, so I don't know. I, it's been forever since I've ever had to apply for a job. But I got lots of good ideas, I think, that if, if I was going to be in the job market again, how I would go about doing it to make myself um, present really well. And there's tons of uh, people on TikTok and stuff that do um, job uh, interview how do I answer this question kind of thing. They do a really great job of making those videos really nice. But hopefully that is helpful for you guys. Guidance on inpatient pediatric coding for house, for hospitals. Yeah, I do. So if you're just looking to pass a certification for that, or if you're looking to get more education from that, I would still go to the AAPC website. I would go to um, certification and trainings, of course. Not that I'm gonna have you to buy any courses. Just go here to the CPC thing, over here on the sidebar, where it says prepare for exam. Go to practice exams right there. And then here, you're going to find the speciality tab right there. Click that, and then this drop down menu is a list of different exams, practice exam questions that they have that you can buy. So, cardiology is like CCC. There's a PEDS one right here, the C PEDS C that one, you can buy that set of exam questions for 30 bucks, 49, I'm sorry, $39, so 40 bucks, and then tax on top, so 45 bucks will get you 50 questions. Strictly all peds in case format. These Some of these cases will have two or three questions with them, but they'll be all about pediatrics and specialty surgery. They also have one, the CEMC is all emergency medicine. Um, ED, sorry, is emergency medicine. Family practice, the FP one is for family practice. Um, I know they have some for just all surgery. I think the CASCC is all surgery cases. But their practice questions are really good uh, questions. They're big cases that you will have to do 
um, I don't know if I can sign in here without showing name and address and all that stuff. Hold on. Go here and see. Where am I at? And let me see. Can I go back to here and go to my purchases? Let me switch this. See if I'm... Yep, 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 yep. All right, we can go. My exams and stuff. Courses. I can show you what these things look like. So I bet I got a bunch of these purchased already. Come on. Internet is being really, really slow. I got so many tabs open. Come on. What's being so long? Okay, go to courses and exams. Here we go. So let me switch this page here. Can I switch it to here? Is that it? No? Yes. So when you buy those right here, so the practice exam question COCS is for all orthopedic surgeries. You can click on those and these are what the cases look like. This one's got seven questions. So you'll look at the question here and then it'll ask you to code the CPT the modifiers and all that and the diagnosis codes with it and it doesn't matter you can you know no one's going to keep track of these or whatever um, if you just want to go through here and hit that and hit grade and then you can see what you got right or wrong but then they do give you the rationales with them too which is helpful um, but um, those specialty exam questions and cases are super helpful if you were looking for more questions in surgery stuff, for sure. I like their questions. You just have to find them and you purchase them all under your AAPC account. And then how you find the questions and the answers are inside your account under courses and exams. But I like their their questions. They work. They do pretty good. Every once in a while, we'll find an error, but that's to be with humans. My question was a post you made a few week, years ago about how to get started. <laughs> Thank you. I just started a new role in inpatient pediatrics, and we'll be coding NICU and PICU. Awesome. That's great. The main thing with NICU and PICU is they're global. So unlike adults, when you're in the ER and stuff, it's critical care is global. When you're admitted and you're a subsequent hospital patient as an adult, you get to add CPT codes to your visits. But for babies, you don't. NICU is global, so uh, it'd have to be something really big for them to bill on top of NICU, so that's cool. Or PICU, so that's pretty cool. And you've got an admit and discharge one all in the same day, which is one unique thing. It's kind of like a... Um, that's how I gave birth is we were admitted and discharged all in the same day. So that was a cool one. It's outpatient almost, but they do actually have a code for that where you're admitted and discharged all in the same day. So that's cool. And the rest of it is mostly age-based on how many days or weeks old the kids are. So pretty cool.
And just did I get, did I miss your question? Que old post about CPC. Oh, about the study guide being older. Would it work? Yes, for everything except for E&M. It won't work for E&M anymore 100%. It'll get you the medical terms and those kind of things. The only thing is the difference between the study guide now and what it used to be is our E&M has changed the way we gather uh, the and code the appointments. We no longer have minute ranges like from five minutes to 11 minutes, it's this code. It's only one number and that's it. So like 99212 or whatever might be 10 minutes and that's it. That's all you got. You don't have a range anymore. And then the other thing is instead of doing history, exam, and your risk assessment, and that's how you make MDM. We no longer do that anymore. Everything for history and exam is just appropriate, and that's it. We don't code that anymore. Our three elements now are the problem list. Why did they come in? We have to grade that. And then the data that we ordered or reviewed. How many x-rays did we do? How many uh, blood tests did we do? How many urine or whatever did we do? And then the overall risk uh, for the MD based off what the doctor did or didn't do. So we have those three components that make up our MDM. So if we don't have MDM in our practice exam question said it was moderate or low, and we don't have time, like 10 minutes, then we have to come up with the MDM on our own as a, as a coder, and we have to think about their three different elements, which are the problem list, the data, and the risk. And we have to come up with that answer by ourselves. That data you won't find in your study guide um, if you have an older study guide. But that's okay, I can teach you all that Everything else that's in the study guide is great. It's exactly what's on the exam. Um, the prefixes, suffixes, the chapters, and how they go over them, uh, pretty much all the same. Our hernias changed a little bit. We have some new hernia codes, but still, it's minuscule compared to the price of that study guide. It's so expensive. And if you can find one for 10, 15 bucks, that's a prior year, it's really worth it than spending the 150 or whatever it is for an updated version just because the hernias are updated and the E&M is updated. Um, the rest of it is, is all pretty much the same and I think it's worth it if you can find an older version still. Yep. But I've been on here for two hours. I've got to go check on my mom. Um, yeah, that's that's really worth it. That really is. It is. That's great. That's perfect, Jess. I have um, a ton of resources on my website at medicalcodingbyjen.com. If you do do the subscription to uh, for the bonus E and M material, I have all the updated E and M stuff right here for you to download. The 2024 E&M stuff, let me move this over, is if you do do that $5.99 membership here, the E&M 2024 stuff is right here. You just click on that and you can download it. Plus I've got a crap ton of practice exam questions here for E&M. This is all my practice exam questions. It just goes on for days. It's going on forever. Anyway, plus I have that download and um, that's got all the um, updated guidelines. Of course, I've got other stuff. I've got a survival guide for E&M here. How do you do? I got a mind map from NAMS. I've got pediatric coding here. All these PDFs are extra and bonus free for you guys if you do the bonus area here that's extra. It's just five, five bucks. Um, 
but super helpful. You just click on a on the answer and and it'll give you the rationale and stuff. So super cool. And I'm always adding new questions to it. And um, when I downloaded, I don't know, did I download it? That MDM thing. Let me show you real quick the thing that was on the website. Uh, can I? There it is. The thing that's on my that you can download it, it exactly describes the uh, 2024 guidelines with um, a worksheet on how to util utilize it too so that's kind of cool it explains the new guidelines the new times how to do it it's pretty cool yeah one of many of the downloads that you're able to get on my website that I've gathered throughout my times of looking for stuff. Super helpful. Yeah, go back there. I also have um, cardiology and antigmatary done too, those sections and they have their own set of PDFs that you can download to on those questions to areas. I'll be adding to it when I get time. I've got to start prepping for a book prep video um, for our workshop. Probably going to do it on my birthday on the 14th <laughs> and uh, that's just in like not long from now. What 10 more days? 11 more days? And I got to prep 100 questions. No, 75 questions. So um, and my kids and my mom and my full-time job it's just a lot so I probably won't add too much more to these three pages for right now until I get done with this workshop on the 14th but um, hopefully this is super helpful for you guys and I hope to see you guys tomorrow night on YouTube so please be sure and join in for tomorrow night's YouTube session I hope to see you guys there. Um, we'll do two hours of pocket prep, or not pocket prep, but we'll practice exam questions. And I'll have those prepped on a Word document um, showing. So that's a lot easier to read than here on TikTok for sure, because it's a bigger screen on YouTube. And um, I hope tonight was helpful. And I'm sorry if I did not get to everybody's question. It'll be, um, let me switch this out, 6.30 on YouTube. Yeah, you can come to the YouTube um, channel, Medical Coding by Jen. If you scoochie down just a little bit, it's right there where it says Upcoming Stream. And you can hit the Notify Me button right there, and it'll let you know when I go live on your device so that it'll alert you. I've already got it up. I may have the time wrong. I'm going to go in there and make sure it's set up to the right time. I think I set it up for 8.30 p.m. Uh, it'll be 6.30. So hopefully I will see you guys tomorrow night. It's free for you guys. And um, I hope tonight was helpful. I'm going to go check on my mom. Thank you so much, Go Cart, for the roses anointed for all the friendship braces. She's so awesome. And Betty Brown, thank you so much thanks for the hearts twinkle thanks for sharing out the live thanks for um tapping the screens no worries anointed that's okay love you miss you absolutely i hope this was helpful and i hope to see you guys tomorrow night